Okay, so we're gonna pick up where we left off with cyber security. Um, module two, this is 2.2, which is all about threat actors. Who can tell me what a threat actor is? Any ideas? Threat actors? Yes. Isn't it like the person who's acting as the threat, for example? Okay. It's like the biggest threat that's acting right now. Okay. Um, someone that is meaning to cause harm to the organization. Someone that's meaning to cause harm to the organization, right? And why do you think it's important that we break down the different types of threat actors? Sure, absolutely. Yep. Because most of the time it's an insider threat. Okay. So, yeah, so insider threat, and it's really if they mean to cause harm. That's what you're trying to say is like, do they have intent, right? They don't really and, have intent, right. They still be a threat like, all of you are technically threat actors, right? You might not have intent to do that, but you do have you do put us at a little bit of a liability. Number one, you're learning skills that puts the organization in harm's way, I guess. But also, you just haven't been, I guess, around um, technology long enough that you have developed good cyber hygiene in order to not put us at risk, okay? Um, but there's also this classification. So when we're looking at risk, we're doing risk assessment, we can look at the student population and we say, this is the level of risk, what are we gonna do? Remember, there's certain things that we can do with risk. We can just accept it, we can push it off onto somebody else, like with our cyber insurance. So that is one threat actor that we identify. But now, you have nation states that are also threat actors, right? You have China, Russia, um, Ukraine, any country um, has their own threat actors. Do you think they have more skills than we do? Probably, right? So we're going to assess that risk a little bit differently. And then also they have a different intent, right? You're got, you guys don't really have an intent. You might just accidentally click an email and it's a phishing email. Whereas nation states or other threat actors are going to have more intent. They're going to have more skills. So we have to assess that risk totally differently. And we have to make sure that we are putting up a good wall, a good defense against those threat actors. Also, we're talking about penetration testing right now, right? That's what we're talking about is these red team are these red team exercises. So with that, an organization would hire you to put on a hat for one of these threat actors, okay? They might want you to be an insider threat and that's how they want you to test, right? As a penetration tester, you are a chameleon. Whatever hat that you put on is the threat actor. That's what they're paying you for. So if they want to test for high level nation state military stuff, then they are going to give you a totally different scope of work than just an insider threat. So that's why it's important that we learn about these different insider threats, okay? So a couple of the key terms that we're gonna go over, um, your APTs. So APTs are your advanced persistent threats. These are gonna be your countries or even like hacker groups that are identified and given a number, okay? So it could be APT 74, or it might be the actual name of that organization because they do things a certain way. Remember yesterday we talked about our methodologies, right? I'm gonna show you kind of a step-by-step -step of my methodology, but you guys are gonna develop your own. The same thing is true with advanced persistent threats. So if we see a certain, so we're looking at our log data and we're looking at our um, security appliances and whatnot, and we see that the threat actor makes their entry in this way, they then create this account, and then they pivot in this way. We can look at, given information or data, and we can identify what APT that is, so that way we know how to defend against it. In the larger cyber world, the FBI is one of the largest holders of these kind of personas. Have you guys ever watched um, things like Criminal Minds or any of those crime shows where they're talking about an unsub and they're like, hey, this is this person, they're probably this age, this height, um, they sometimes do this, they like to hang out around parks, 
whatever it might be, or they're only, you know, available at night, or they only, you know, stock at night, whatever it is. It's the same thing for an APT, right? So the FBI houses this and a large public corporations. There's a group that comes together that shares this intelligence back and forth. It's called threat intelligence. And they share that back and forth. And then that eventually gets pushed out to different like threat appliances. So like on our stuff here, we use a certain vendor and it'll actually come up and say um, potential to be this threat actor, okay? So threat modeling is where we go through as the, you know, we're hired to take on a foreign um, nation state hacker and then we model what that threat looks like okay so we're going to say this is how they attack this is how they enter so that's how we are going to try to attack this organization okay we already went over all the black hat white hat all that fun stuff um and the last one there is script kitty um so that's kind of where we're all starting right now and that is an extremely unskilled person who uses tools and script developed by real hackers so that is us utilizing like cali and following a guide in order to um just like hack Wi-Fi, for example, for no reason other than to do it. Um, but by the end of this course, you should have the skills where you have graduated from Script Kitty and you at least know what you're doing, right? You can actually put together an attack of, that's why I said about just having an IP address on the board. That's where you kind of graduate from Script Kitty to actually know how to use the tools and have them in your tool set, okay? So for all the... Um, so for all the boxes that I've done and practice with, I've written down note by note what I have done. So this vulnerable machine was called um, LAMP AIAO. So I put my first thing in here was NetDiscover. So I had to find the IP address of it. From there, NMAP, and I put my NMAP commands in here. So like this is my methodology. So that way I can go back to like previous machines and be like, oh, what was that command? where I had to compile an exploit. Oh yeah, compile exploit GTT minus wall dash pentatonic dash zero two, blah, 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 blah. So like I have that exploit that I created back in my notes so I can always look back. So I urge you guys to do that as well, whether that's in a Google doc, whether that's in like a little notebook like this. If you need it, if you can't afford a notebook, you want a notebook, you want me to pick some up, just let me know. Like I will get you a notebook that you can keep in here so that way you can jot your notes down as we go. Because I promise it, life will be a lot easier, especially after you leave here when you have that notebook that you can go back and look at what were those commands that I typed in. And it might not just be like how I've attacked a machine, but even like setting up Linux servers and Windows servers and stuff like that, having that place where you store all of your notes can save you a ton of time. So you're not always just Googling and wasting time, right? So we talked about white hat and black hat um, previously, but a white hat hacker, what they do is um, they tend to be our ethical hackers. That's what we are, um, this course is designed for, okay? So you have permission to access the systems. That is the key differentiator, right? And remember we talked yesterday about making sure that you have that document on file before you try to attack any machines, okay? So from there, we have our black hat hackers. This is the opposite, right? They have malicious intent. They are unethical. They're trying to um, get you know, information to sell on the, you know, sell on the black market, if you will, um, or you know, use it for personal gain. And then finally is gray hat. So gray hat hackers are, they like challenges, okay? So they see a barrier like a password to a Wi-Fi and they hack it just for the sake of hacking it, right? They, they don't like having those um, barriers there. So they wanna break them just as to kind of prove their talents, but to also hone their talents, right? Um, they don't tend to be malicious in their intent, um, but they can cause harm, right? So, you know, breaking into a building or jumping a fence, things like that, you know, they are causing some issues for that organization even though they might not have malicious intent. So the next one is, um, so suicide hacker, um, but then also there is um, 
one that kind of falls under this, I guess, too. Suicidal Hacker is, or Suicide Hacker, it's like kamikazes where they just like, crash the planes. Um, they're taking down a target for a cause, so they're going to attack, like PETA, for example, might be attacking something for a political reason, and one of the people, they don't care if they get caught, right? Because they are doing it for something that they believe wholeheartedly in. So it's kind of like the attack on the Capitol, you know, where they believed in a cause and they didn't care that they were getting caught. Um, they probably didn't think they were going to get in trouble for it. Um, that's what the suicide hacker is going to be. Our cyber terrorists are going to have a um, political or religious motivation. Um, this would be equivalent to terrorists that we've seen, those terrorist attacks that we've seen here, like 9-11. Um, it's that same thing, but in the cyber world. So if you remember, I believe we wa last year we watched Die Hard, didn't we? Die Hard with Vengeance, with, uh, where they take down all the systems. That's that kind of same type of attack, right? They are trying to cause widespread disruption and or fear, right? They are, in steering, they are putting that fear in the people of that country or that organization in order to further their cause, their motivation that causes them to do that, okay? So state sponsored. So this is where we are going to um, look at like military operations. Um, as you know, in Mansfield, they just fired up a cyber wing. Um, so those battles that used to be won on the battlefield are now being forged on the internet and across, you know, bites and bits instead of, you know, going over to those countries. So they're trying to get top secret information in order to, um, promote our own, you know, safety uh, in other countries or help disrupt some of those terrorist organizations. So they're trying to attack other um, governments. So hacktivist is going to be more of like with that suicide hacker, you know, they didn't care if they got caught, they were taking down something for a cause. Um, a hacktivist is more of like a protest. So um, with PETA taking down Chick-fil-A or... Um, you know, anything. I mean, it could be global warming. It could be, you know, whatever that cause is, whatever that motivation is, they're going to do things like denial of services, right? So they're going to try to take down a website altogether, or they might target a, um, for example, animal testing, right? We have animal testing here in Ashland. So PETA might send DDoS attacks to that physical organization. So like gates don't open or, you know, people can't do work there because they are, um, because they're trying to disrupt them. Um, they might deface their website. Um, they might target you know, in individuals that work there. Those are the kind of things that a hacktivist does. Okay? And we already talked about our, um, our script kitty. So APTs, um, so with APTs, they tend to be um, undetected for a very long time um, because they're really good at what they do. Okay? Um, these are the people that are using unknown vulnerabilities. They found these vulnerabilities, and until you know they're used so many times, they're going to go unnoticed, right? It's going to be very stealthy. Um, so these tend to be our top level um, threats that we look for. Um, some of these could be automated, and that they're automatically scanning things and they're utilizing these vulnerabilities. Um, but a lot of times, there is somebody that's actually um, going through and controlling, whether that is controlling a bot or they are the ones in the driver's seat of the keyboard, okay? So like I was saying with the um, APTs or um, it's kind of like mob, mobish in that they are trying to get, uh, have personal gain. So whether that is, you know, selling data, whether that is holding data hostage, um, selling stuff on the dark web, that's what our APTs are going to be due. So the five questions that we have to ask ourselves is, what is worth protecting in our organization? Okay. So when you're just doing a very high level you know, risk assessment of an organization, you're saying, what do you have that's worth protecting? Who, from whom do I need to protect it from? Do I need to protect this from employees, from students? So for example here, there's certain systems that are isolated that you can't access from the student network, right? The same thing is true with this lab. Like for example, printing. For example, the Active Directory server. For example, any of the servers here, 
those are all separated from our network so we don't have access to them. So the district has gone through and said, these are worth protecting. We're protecting it obviously from outside threats, but also we have some insider threats. And then they're gonna go through and say, well, how likely is it that something's gonna be hacked? Like what level of attacker, you know, what level of skill does the um, threat actor have to have? And then what are the consequences if it does go down, right? So if we were to attack one single camera, let's say, the consequences of one camera being down, depending on where that camera's located, could be a big deal. Or like maybe it's one of the license plate cameras. So we have license plate cameras that are facing the entrances of the building, okay? So if one of those goes down, not exactly a big deal. If a bunch of cameras are taken down and then someone makes entry into the building, that's where our risk assessment changes a little bit, right? So these are the things that we're going through when we're doing our risk assessments um, as cybersecurity professionals. These are the questions that our organizations, we're gonna ask as a consultant, we're gonna come in and in plain English say, you know, what do you have here that you need to protect? And then what do you have on the cloud that you need to protect, right? Because you guys are now coming into an environment where you don't just protect what's inside your four walls, you have to be cognizant of the things that the business has in the cloud, right? So we have like, our grades are all in the cloud. Um, they're not in a like cloud provider. The cloud is technically over at TCCSA, um, but we have to be cognizant of that. And we have to ask that vendor, you know, what are you doing to make sure this is protected, right? Because at the end of the day, we're liable for that information of your student information getting out there. So we have to be asking those questions of those organizations. Okay. So um, we're going to go ahead and end there um, with 2.3. We'll pick that up as far as our target selection. Um, in target selection, we're going to talk about things like scope of work and sitting down with that company and saying, what is it that you want us to attack? and what shouldn't we be touching, right? Making sure that we are on the up and up and then we're not held liable for that. Anybody have any questions over what we went over? Awesome. So